The days of brick and mortar video rental shops have seemingly come to an end, with thousands of shops around the world being put out of business by online streaming services like Hulu, Netflix, HBO Max, Peacock, Amazon Prime, Paramount Plus, Disney Plus, Apple TV, and, well, you get the idea. However, this wasn't the only time the future of video rentals was at risk. Here's the time Universal and Disney tried to ban movie rentals. This is the story of the Betamax case. Imagine the perfect video store. It would have a great selection, right? Right! Over 10,000 videos. Three evening rentals, so no rush, no hassle. Fast checkout, 24-hour quick drop return, open late First, every... let's go back to the start of the video rental industry. The first ever video rental shop was a privately managed store that can be traced back all the way to 1975 in a little town in Kassel, Germany, started by a man named Eckhard Baum. Baum was an avid film collector and hobbyist, and he decided to make a business out of his hobby by lending and renting out his collection of movies to friends and family. That same year, Sony released the Betamax, the first ever VCR, which allowed users to record and duplicate any home media and record live television programs. Soon after, in 1977, the first professionally managed video rental store was opened in Los Angeles by a man named George Atkinson. This was called The Video Station. Atkinson started his business shortly after the first VCRs hit the market. Discover the magic of video station. The Video Station, Reno and Sparks' first and largest video store. With the ability to watch any movie or TV show in the comfort of your own home at any time, Atkinson thought it would be a good idea to offer the ability to rent instead of buy films. He started by buying Betamax and VHS copies of films from a company called Magnetic Video, a home AV duplication service. Atkinson's business offered a $50 annual and $100 lifetime membership where members could then rent out movies for $10 a day. In today's money, this works out to about $48 a day to rent out a film. And the memberships would set you back $250 annually and $500 for the lifetime. However, with the average VHS tape at the time costing around $20, or $100 in today's money, the lower cost of renting made the idea seem all the more attractive. Not to mention a VCR would set you back $9 to $1,400 or $3 to $6,000 when adjusted for inflation. However, as the video rental business was about to boom, just the year prior, on October 25th, 1976, a lawsuit was filed by Universal and Disney, suing Sony on the grounds that VCRs constituted contributory copyright infringement, otherwise known as the Betamax case. The years following the suit would be a long, tribulous journey between Sony and Universal fighting for the ability to sell Betamax and Betamax tapes, and by extension, being able to record live television programming. And in 1979, Sony actually won at the district court level. Things were looking good for Sony for a while, especially because as time passed, VCRs were being bought and sold worldwide. However, Universal and Disney moved to have the case appear in the Court of Appeals. And in 1981, the Appellate Court ruled that Sony indeed be held liable for copyright infringement and moved to block the sales of Betamax in the US. Sony was held to liability well beyond its worth, not to mention the millions of citizens at this point that would have to pay damages, which effectively meant the end of Betamax and VCRs in the US forever. Well, Sony did not want to back down and they appealed this ruling to the Supreme Court. It was officially argued on January 18, 1983. This court case naturally drew celebrity and national attention. Even Mr. Rogers testified during the trial in defense of Sony, saying, I've always felt that with the advent of all this new technology that allows people to tape the neighborhood off the air, they then become much more active in the programming of their family's television life. Very frankly, I'm opposed to people being programmed by others. My whole approach in broadcasting has always been you are an important person just the way you are. You can make healthy decisions. I just feel that anything that allows a person to be more active in the control of his or her life in a healthy way is important. And 
in defense of the content industry, MPAA President Jack Valenti explained in front of Congress, I say to you that the VCR is to the American film producer and the American public as the Boston Strangler is to the woman home alone. We are going to bleed and bleed and hemorrhage unless this Congress at least protects one industry that is able to retrieve a surplus balance of trade and whose total future depends on its protection from the savagery and ravages of this machine. Well, the fight was seemingly all for naught, as the Supreme Court ruled in favor of the original ruling 5-4, stating that VCRs were to be illegal in the US, officially ending the debate. The future was looking extremely bleak for Betamax and the ability to record live television programming in the US, but we're obviously able to do those things today, so what happened? I don't know. Tell us what you think in the comments down below. I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> it did not say on the Wikipedia page. <laughs> well, in a stunning turn of events, something that only happens in 2.3% of orally argued cases, the Supreme Court agreed to re-argue the case on October 3rd, 1983. And just like that, the game was back on. As the case was being re-argued, there was a sudden switch of opinion that swayed the ruling of one justice. That justice's name was Sandra Day O'Connor who switched her opinion and decided to rule in favor of Sony. And on January 17th, 1984, it was decided in a new 5-4 ruling that VCRs were not to be illegal and the manufacturers and users of VCRs were protected by fair use laws under the First Amendment. So for now, you can rest assured that you're not breaking any laws by taping this or any other TV program at home as long as it's for personal use. This is Greg Todd for the News, Channel 6. And just like that, the market for video rentals and VCRs were once again safe. Not only was the video rental market able to thrive for years to come, the precedent that came out of this case in regards to fair use laws made it possible for things like Netflix, Hulu, social media platforms to not be held liable for reproduced content existing on their platforms. Without the passing of this case, content creation on the internet would have most likely never been possible. Today, we can enjoy endless hours of reproduced content on many platforms, subscription-based or not, because of what happened between Sony and Universal and Disney in 1984. Although video rental stores are few and far in between these days, the novelty of the experience of walking through a store and being able to physically rent out an old copy of a cult classic that can't be found anywhere else is still unmatched. This has been the story of the infamous Betamax case, and how Universal and Disney almost banned VCRs and video rentals. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, I really hope you enjoyed that video. We're working on some new ideas and some new content, and this series of videos is going to be called Did You Know? And it's going to be Did You Know? videos about the film industry and anything surrounding that. So if you have any comments, questions, ideas, please comment down below. And as always, like and subscribe and stay tuned for more content.